Hello everyone, a question from definite integration. It's an important question from CBSE board point of view in India because it has appeared more than five times in the CBSE examination which we give in class 12. Otherwise, if you are watching from anywhere across the globe, it's anywhere an important question from calculus as well as from definite integration. So let's move ahead this with this problem. So what we can uh, do to start this question? We know one uh, property. What is that property? The property is if we have been given 0 to a or to be uh, less precise a to b fx dx then we can rewrite that same integral as a to b and we can replace this x by a plus b minus x dx. So this is the first property which I will use to start off this question. So if I will, uh, if I can write the given question as i and let this be my equation number 1. Obviously, I will have to find the value of i to get the value of my integral. So, I can again using this property write this i as 0 to pi. I can replace this uh, x by 0 plus pi minus x. So, I can replace x by 0 plus pi minus x that can that means x can straight away be replaced by pi minus x. So in place of x I am writing pi minus x and again inside sign I also have a pi minus x because x was there divided by 1 plus again inside cos I have x so I will replace that by pi minus x and for cos I have square so I am writing this way okay dx now few important things from trigonometry that uh, we have four quadrant in the first quadrant all the trigonometric ratios are positive in the second one sin x and its reciprocal which is cosec x is positive add sugar 2 so in third quadrant tan x and uh, its reciprocal which is cot x is positive and in the fourth quadrant cos x and its reciprocal which is secant x is positive okay so if we are talking of pi minus x sin pi minus x uh, for the first one so pi minus x so that will definitely lie in the second quadrant and no second quadrant sin is positive so I can rewrite this as 0 to pi pi minus x this sine pi minus x will give me sine x divided by what about cos pi minus x again pi minus x is in second quadrant in second quadrant sine and cosec is positive rest are negative that means cos will be negative so this will give me minus cos x but minus cos x and I have a square to that. So no change will be there ultimately because that will give me cos square x. Okay, fine. So 1 plus cos square x and a dx. Okay. If I were to simplify it a bit more, one more step, then what I can do is I can write uh, my i as 0 to pi now I can multiply this pi and minus x to sin x so I will get pi sin x minus x sin x divided by 1 plus cos square x and the dx now I can clearly state this as my equation number 2. Now what we do usually is we add 
one and two. So if you add one and two, what you will get in LHS i plus i that is simply two i. Look, the limit will remain as it is. That is zero to pi, and also the denominator because both have same denominator. So that will also remain as it is. So your denominator will remain as it is. And uh, if I look at the numerator portion, so for the first one, the numerator is x sine x. So for the first one, the numerator is x sine x. For the second one, the numerator is pi sine x. Pi sine x. And minus of x sine x, dx is going to remain as it is. If you look at this carefully, x sine x will get cancelled. I you will get as one by two integral from zero to pi pi sine x dx. So I can take pi out, and I will left with sine x dx. Divided by one plus cos square x. So I will move to the next page. I know what my integral is. Uh, just wait. I have uh, next page a bit. The last question. So I will do one thing. I will clear this page. Okay. So I have this i. Let me select the pen. So I have my i as pi by two integral zero to pi sine x dx divided by one plus cos square x. Now I can go with the substitution. X was uh, making problem, so we remove that X. Now we can easily go with the substitution with cos X as t. So if you differentiate both side, minus sine X dx will give you dt. So if I want to write it in a better way, so sine X dx is minus of dt. So your i will become pi by two. Also, because it's a definite integration, so limits also you have to change. Okay. So when x equals to zero, if you put zero here, so cos zero is one, so t will become one. And when x equals to pi, we all know cos pi is minus one, so t will become minus one. So one to minus one sine x dx is your minus dt. So minus sine I am taking out dt. One plus t square. I will again use one property because I am not liking this one to minus one. Of uh, in most of the cases we see minus one to one. So we have a property integral a to b f x dx if we have. So, if we want to interchange this uh, limits, so if we want to write uh, b to a, so one minus sign simply comes up, and we are getting f x dx. So, if we interchange, we will get i as minus sign will come up, which will cancel this minus sign. So, we will get pi by two, and then minus one to one. dt divided by one plus t. Now this is simple integral, isn't it? Because you know integral dx divided by one plus x square is nothing but tan inverse x. So i you will get as pi by two tan inverse t. Now why we Change our limit. Uh, concentrate here because uh, once we change limit, we can uh, straight away give our answer from t only. We don't need to back substitute the value of t as uh, what we gave as cos x. 
once we have uh, changed the limit no need to go back from t to x and then substitute we can directly substitute now limit is minus 1 to 1 so we can write our i as pi by 2 if you put the upper limit it will be tan inverse 1 minus tan inverse of minus 1 okay fine so tan inverse minus x tan inverse of minus x equals to minus tan inverse x for all real values of x so we will get i as this will come out this minus sign so tan inverse 1 plus tan inverse 1 so 2 times tan inverse 1 and what is the value of tan inverse 1 that is simply pi by 4 so you are getting pi by 2 inside pi by 2 into pi by 2 is pi by 4 so the final value of i which you are getting is pi square pi into pi is pi square and 2 into 2 is 4 so i you are getting as pi square divided by 4 so again i will say this has to be a bit lengthy question with multiple concepts used but uh, if you look at uh, this question from flow point of view was it uh, a difficult question to solve i will say no because once you know this small concept of trigonometry then this this small uh, little integral of dx divided by 1 plus x square and so on this uh, itf uh, property then uh, this substitution then the properties of definite integration then obviously this was not a, a difficult question to solve yes it was lengthy but it will also give you marks in examinations uh, if you solve it in a correct way so i hope you understood this question thanks and have a very very nice day